Hey, I'm golf broadcaster Matt Adams, the updated and expanded second edition of my book, The Golf Round I'll Never Forget, Golf's Biggest Stars Recall Their Finest Moments, is now available. Readers can expect to march with Arnie's Army at the 1960 U.S. Open, relive Jack Nicklaus's remarkable 1986 Masters win, and be amazed by the Tiger Slam. The Golf Round I'll Never Forget, Golf's Biggest Stars Recall Their Finest Moments. Pick it up where fine books are sold, including barnesandnoble.com and amazon.com. Thrive Suite Productions. Happy New Year, and welcome to This Day in Sports History. Just like the title indicates, check back here every day for a couple of fascinating sports stories every day of the year. So let's get started. It's January 1st, and with Alabama taking on top ranked Michigan tonight in the Rose Bowl, let's go back 122 years to the first ever Rose Bowl game. Well, Hang on a second. This first edition was actually called the Tournament East-West Football Game. But it was played in Pasadena, California after the Rose Parade in front of about 7,000 who paid upwards of a dollar to attend the game. That crowd was much bigger than any of the organizers had anticipated. The traditional Rose Parade had been happening since 1890 and was mostly a local event with little known about it outside of Pasadena. And the idea of a game to follow the parade was an attempt to draw attention to the area by having a, quote, afternoon football match between two leading universities of the country. Stanford was invited to play after being deemed the champions of the Pacific Coast Universities after finishing the season with three wins, two ties, and one loss. And they would face off against the Western Conference champions, the Michigan Wolverines, with their perfect 10-0 record. Michigan's head coach was Fielding Yost, who the year prior had been head coach at Stanford. And this Wolverine team that he coached now was beyond dominant that season, not only unblemished in the loss column, but they had also not allowed a point all season, outscoring their opponents 501-0. to zero. <laughs> Sound like a mismatch? Yeah, it was. In fact, the game got so ugly, a Stanford captain requested the game be ended with eight minutes remaining in the game. That plea was denied, and they were forced to play it out. The Wolverines won 49 to nothing, and it was such a lopsided game that when Rose Parade officials tried to organize the game the following year, they had a tough time talking people into coming back for a football game. Instead, between 1903 and 1915, the Tournament of Roses staged chariot races. The Rose Bowl football game was tried again in 1916 on New Year's Day, and since then, except for during the World War II years of 1942 and 43, when the game was played in Durham, North Carolina, and 2021, when the venue was moved to Arlington, Texas due to COVID, the Rose Bowl has been played in Pasadena, California. And despite its shaky first edition, the granddaddy of them all got started on this day in 1902. Also on this day in history, in 2012, Detroit's Matthew Stafford and Green Bay's Matt Flynn combined to throw for the most passing yards in a game with 1,000. Stafford threw for 520, Flynn 480. As those numbers can tell you, it was a shootout, with Flynn finding Jermichael Finley for a four-yard touchdown with 113 to play to put the Packers up for good and secure the 45-41 win. And in 1961, the Houston Oilers beat the Los Angeles Chargers 24-16 in the first AFL championship. The ageless George Blanda threw three touchdown passes, kicked three PATs, and a field goal. And just a note, I'll have more on the amazing George Blanda in a couple of days. That's all for today. If you have a moment, rate, review, and subscribe, and tell your friends about it. Have a great New Year's Day, and enjoy watching all the football. And who knows, maybe next year I'll be talking about something that happened today on This Day in Sports History. Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude. And I hope that you enjoyed this recent episode presented by the Sports History Network and were able to learn some good old-fashioned sports history knowledge nuggets. I started the Sports History Network 
back in 2020 with the mission to help podcasters find a community of like-minded sports history nerds as well as helping aspiring podcasters to start their own shows. We have a little bit over 30 shows on the network right now covering all sorts of sports history, but as far as I'm concerned, we're just at the toothpick in the ocean moment, you know that. Can't even figure it out because there's so much more coming. We wanted to create the ultimate headquarters for sports yesteryear, starting with Podcast Network and our website, but we're going to continue to move into other mediums as well. And here's the cool part, because we want you to be part of our team. So if you're interested in starting your own podcast, or maybe being a guest on one of our shows, or who knows, maybe even writing an article for us over on the website. Seriously, all you got to do is reach out to us on the contact page over at sportshistorynetwork.com. You can be as technologically savvy as a Neanderthal tapping on a stone trying to figure out this whole hieroglyphics thing back in the day. Again, it doesn't matter, because even if you don't understand the whole podcast space, we have a production team that can pretty much help you out with doing everything. All you got to do, head over to sports. HistoryNetwork.com, head to the contact page, fill it out. That message goes right to me, and I'll reach out to you as soon as I can. But for now, dude, I'm through if you're through.